We've been here for thousands of years. Before outside contact, we would follow the food. Traditional foods are a huge part of our culture. Subsistence is how we connect to the land and how we connect to each other. There's this saying that people often say in the community, which is when the tide is low, the table is set. But that's not so much true anymore. I think I took this place for granted as a kid. It's very unique. I've lived here most of my life, except for leaving to go to college. My dad started teaching me to fish and hunt at a young age, so I've been subsisting all my life. My mom's side of the family is from here in Alaska. My dad's side of the family is from Kashiga, which is a lost village. We were taken over by the Russians. That was really hard for our people. We were then taken by the United States, which was also very hard. In the 1940s, we were bombed by the Japanese and the United States government forcibly removed us from our homes for three years. We lost a lot of people during that time. I work at the Kowalungan Tribe of Unalaska and I am the Resilience Project Manager. What it means to me is that I'm able to study and work with the local people regarding subsistence so that we can protect it and safeguard our way of living. Recently, we've seen a lot of change in access to our traditional foods. We have frequent and steady algal blooms over the summer months, which makes it dangerous and a lot of times deadly to eat filter feeding shellfish.
think there could be a lot of causes behind the PSP levels. A big part of it is attributed to the warming waters. We are the number one port in the nation as far as exports go. So there's definitely a lot of variables to consider with that. We live in a very strategic location. And we have a lot of people coming through who don't live here, who don't necessarily appreciate the island or the region. And some of the industries that we are facing are very extractive and they cause pollution. The main thing that we're looking for right now is the presence of Alexandrium and that is the species that causes paralytic shellfish poisoning. Yeah, so if you look right here, this is called Pseudonitia, and it can cause amnesic shellfish poisoning if it is in large enough numbers. But right now we are seeing if the quantity changes over time. Sampling the shellfish and doing the phytoplankton toes and the microscopies, that's just the first step so that we can say, hey, look, this is what's happening. But to make real change, we are going to have to change how we're treating our waters and how we're polluting our waters, and that will be the real battle. <laughs> mountains, the fresh air, you wake up in the morning, go outside, you hear the ducks and seagulls and eagles, and you see blocks go by. It's just beautiful. What would you think losing the access to native foods would be like for people here? Wow. Totally different, I tell you that much. I'd rather go back the old way than what they have now. Because right now they have too many chemicals in the food. I'd rather have the native food. Real stuff, you know. It would be sad because we'd lose part of our culture, you know? That's what makes us, I think, is the food and how we go about hunting. There's a certain amount of pride in that. June is our traditional foods cook at Camp Kangayu. She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to traditional foods, harvesting traditional foods, and why we process them the way we do. So she's a valuable asset to camp. I'm good around foods, and I want to teach what I know to other children. That way, it won't be lost, you know? If I'm in a bad mood and I go outside, total shift in how I'm feeling. It's very valuable to all of us here, I think. Having access to the land in itself is a privilege for us because some native communities across the world don't have that anymore. With my work, success would mean the community coming together to continually not only address these issues, but steward the land as we have for thousands of years. In Unungan Value that I have turned to time and time again as we build this program is Usugulich Awakun, and that means we are working together.
What I hope for our people really is just that we can continue investing in our youth, sharing with them, creating spaces where they can continue to learn these practices and to gain this knowledge. There's definitely less Nungak on the island right now than there were, but we still are a close community. Healing is being together and practicing culture, sharing food, laughing, and telling stories. Practicing our culture is happiness.